Hi there! Welcome back to Ferris Tutorials. For the past few sessions we did, we looked at the nature of tourism products and services, the roles of different stakeholders in tourism development, and we also looked at customers' needs, wants, and expectations. Now, if you haven't watched those videos, go right ahead and check them out. Now, in today's session, we'll be looking at a particular topic. But before I tell you what it is, I want us to find out together. Now, based on these letters that will be coming soon, I want you to put them together and tell me the topic of today's session. Here we go. Did you get standards? If you did, yes, you are correct. Now, in today's session, we'll be looking at the importance of standards to tourism product development. Stay tuned. In today's session, we'll be zooming in on content three, which has to do with standards. Now, let us look at the focus point. Now, in today's lesson, we'll be looking at a definition of a key concept at the importance of standards to tourism and product development. We'll be exploring the types of standards, government policies, regulations, and licenses that are needed to start a business, and also we'll be dissecting the concept of benchmarking. Now, first up, we'll be looking at the importance of standards to tourism and product development. But before we even explore this concept, it is very important for us to understand a few definitions of some key to be looking at a definition of standards and to understand what is product development. Now, guys, the first definition that we'll be starting off with is standard. What is a standard? A standard is a document that provides requirements, specification, guidelines, or characteristics that can be used consistently to ensure that materials, products, processes, and services are fit for their purpose. Now guys, imagine a product that is being developed with no form of specification, no form of guidelines, no form of uh, specific characteristics that must be constantly used to ensure that the product or the material is fit for consumption or the service. Now let us look at baking a cake. Imagine someone no idea of how to bake a cake without a recipe, just get up and just put uh, particular ingredients, they put flour, they put margarine, yes they may have all the ingredients that are needed but guess what? Quantity and quality is also important to get an ideal product. Now guys, you can definitely see why standards are important in product development. Our next key concept is tourism. But I know that you know what tourism is, right? Now, let me remind you. Now, tourism comprises the activities of persons traveling to and staying in places outside their usual environment for not more than what? One con consecutive year for leisure, business, and other purposes. Now, the next important concept is Product development. Product development refers to a series of steps that include the conceptualization, design, development, and marketing of newly created or newly rebranded goods or services. Now guys, based on this diagram that you're seeing, you can see some of the steps that are involved in product development. The first one is idea screening and evaluation. A detailed investigation is taken. Development of the product, testing, and also launching the product. 
now that we have set the foundation with exploring and understanding the key concepts which are standards tourism and product development now let us just turn our attention to the importance of standards to tourism now standards improve the overall quality of products and services within the tourism industry and when we speak of the tourism industry we are referring to like the accommodations restaurants tour guides tour operators and other tourism related services right so standards will improve the overall quality of the products and services and in order for tourism to be sustainable we must have what quality products and services so that tourists can always be attracted and also the products and services that are provided will be of high quality good now standards raises the levels of demand nationally regionally and internationally it promotes competitiveness within the industry and provide valuable and reliable information on quality standards for the tourist and also the travel industry. Now that we have looked at the importance of standard to tourism, now let us look at the importance of standards to product development. Now standards form the fundamental building blocks for product development by establishing consistent protocol and be universally understood and adopted. Also, standards make it easier to understand and compare competing products. It is only through the application of standards that the credibility of a new product and a new market can be verified. So we can say that what? Standards definitely boost business. Now that we have learned about the importance of standard to tourism and product development, let us now explore the different types of standards. Now we'll be looking at HACCP, ISO 14001, and also Hospitality Assured. Good. Now, have you ever seen or heard about any of these standards? Do you remember what they stand for or which particular aspects of tourism do they cater to? Now, let us see. HACCP. Now, HACCP stands for Hazard Analysis and critical control points, right? It is a systematic preventative approach to food safety. Safety from biological, chemical, and also physical hazards in production processes that can cause the finished product to be unsafe and design measurements to reduce these risks to a safe, safe level. So as the name suggests, hazard analysis, right? What it does is to analyze the hazards and to put control points in place to prevent these hazards from impacting the quality of food so food can be safe for consumption. And therefore what? Standard is maintained. So we speak of uh, prevention from bi biological, chemical, and also physical hazards and also the procedures or the critical control points that are put in place to prevent all these hazards from happening so that what food can be safe for consumption and the food and beverage industry will operate at its highest. So when we speak of biological hazard, we're speaking of microorganisms, chemicals, maybe toxins that may be found in food, physical hazards such as what? Hair, nails, rings, sticks, stones, whatever the case may be, hazard analysis, critical control points, or we may say HACCP, is a standard that is put in 
place to ensure food safety so that the standards of the food that are produced can be what? Kept at a high level at all times. Now let's now look at the ISO 14001 standard. Now the ISO 14001 standard is the most important standard within the ISO 14000 series. Now the ISO 14001 specifies the requirements of an environmental management system for both small and large organizations. Now an EMS is a systematic approach to handling environmental issues within the organization. So the purpose of the ISO standards, particularly the series 14001 is to ensure what? Whatever environmental management systems that are put in place, what? Benefit the environment. So it helps to conserve the things that are found in the environment and also to prevent pollution. Now guys, the next standard that we'll be looking at is hospitality assured. And if you notice, we also have the acronym CTO that is written there. Do you remember what CTO stands for? Well, if your answer was Caribbean Tourism Organization, well, you are indeed correct. Now, Hospitality Assured was created by the Institute of Hospitality in the UK specifically for the tourism and hospitality sector to improve service quality. Now, the Caribbean Tourism Organization, CTO, owns the license to operate the program within the region. And when we speak of the region, we're speaking of the Caribbean region. So this standard, the name of this standard is Hospi Hospitality Assured and the Caribbean Tourism Organization owns the, owns the license to operate the program within the Caribbean region. And the purpose of this standard, as the name suggests, hospitality assured is to what? Improve service quality. Awesome. Now, let us look at the overall objectives. Now, the overall objectives of Hospitality Assured is to promote a culture of quality, service excellence, and continuous improvement in the Caribbean, which are driven by international standards and certification. In order to what? Strengthen the business performance and overall competitiveness of tourism enterprise within the Caribbean region. Let us now move on to government policies regulations and licenses that are needed to operate tourism businesses. Now, the first requirement that we'll be looking at is licenses and permits. Now, license and permits are needed to show that the tourism business has passed, fulfilled the basic requirement to operate legally. They also demonstrate that the entrepreneur or business owner have some proven knowledge of expertise in the field. For example, food preparation or spa operation require that the owner has the right license and permits as these businesses pose some measure of risk to the client. For example, as we looked at the standard where we speak of HACCP as it relates to food safety, the, these food preparation services or operation will ensure that they have the valid food handlers permit that persons are indeed certified and qualified to what? Handle and also to prepare food. The next that fall under these requirements are what? Passing certain regulations. Now, regulations refer to operating standards and they differ by sector. Now, the jet ski operators may have regulations or operating procedures that include a license, life vest, and also insurance. 
based on the risk that are involved in these types of operations or activities. Now, passing certain regulation, on the other hand, a bed and breakfast owner would need to have a minimum of the correct furniture, ventilation, exits and entry signs, and also fire extinguishers to pass government regulations to operate. Unlike licenses and permits, regulations may not always be enforced. Now guys, let us look at the procedures that are need to be established for emergency and disaster management. So all business that operates must have established procedures for emergency and disaster management, right? This includes preparation for natural disasters, so such as hurricanes, floods, earthquake. We also speak of terrorisms, which which may be which are man-made disasters, fires, and also they must identify an assembly point. It is very important that all these businesses have some form of procedure in place just in case there's an emergency or a disaster whether whether it be a natural disaster or a man-made disaster these businesses would will also have to adhere to health standards especially for food and beverage establishments now if you were following early in the session what which standards particularly caters to the food and beverage uh, establishment. If your answer is HACCP, you are correct. Now, safety and security. Adherence to national guidelines as it relates to building codes, fire safety, drinking water storage, and adequate signage such as assembly point signage that says exit, emergency exit, entrance, uh, caution, whatever the case may be, or even warning signs are very important when it comes on to safety and security and for this business to operate at a uh, high quality. Now, also, there must be formal business registration. All businesses must be registered. Similarly, Public liability insurance must also be taken out to provide insurance coverage in the event of an accident or an incident. Now guys, it's time for us to explore the concept of benchmarking. What is benchmarking? And at the international level? Well, we'll be looking at two today and one referred to Green Globe, one is called Green Globe and the other is Blue Flag. Concept of benchmarking. Now, benchmarking is a process of measuring the performance of a company's products, services, or processes against those of another business considered to be the best in the industry, aka best in class, right? Now, the point of benchmarking is to identify internal opportunities for improvement. Now, what does the Green Globe benchmarking entails? The Green Globe benchmarking entails the routine collection of simple environmental performance measurements. This is an assessment by Green Globe as to what is a responsible level of environmental performance by an operation for a particular travel and tourism sector and for a given country. Now, the key performance areas of Green Globe benchmarking are one, environmental and social sustainable policies, energy consumption. They also look looks at reduced greenhouse gas emissions, management of freshwater resources, they look at how the ecosystem is conserved and managed, and they also look at land management. Good? Let us look at what blue flag benchmarking entails. The aim of blue flag program is to promote sustainable development of beaches and marinas 
through proper environmental management. Therefore, it is awarded to coastal destinations which have achieved the highest quality in water, facilities, safety, environmental education, and management, right? So there are two types of benchmarking. We have Green Globe, it has to do with the environment and how how the activities that are done uh, conserve the environment and has to do with energy consumption. And on the other hand, we also have what is Blue Flag, which aims to promote sustainable development is beaches and also marinas where they monitor water quality in water, the type of facilities, and also the environment education and management systems that are put in place. Awesome. Now, now that we're at the end of today's session, you should be able to answer these questions. Number one, explain why standards are important to tourism. Two, Outline three requirements that governments often place on tourism businesses prior to operation. Three, differentiate among types of tourism standards. Three types. So differentiate among three types of tourism standards. And number four, differentiate between blue flag and green globe benchmarking. Awesome, you have made it to the end of the video. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Also, share with persons who you know will find this information useful. So remember to turn that thumbs up icon blue. Thank you for making it Ferris Tutorials.